Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. So, you may notice I have a little package today. This is my ink flight. And I decided last month to subscribe to the ink flights. And I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not because I don't know how I feel about subscription boxes. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's fun to get a little surprise in the mail and then sometimes I feel like I don't like anything in the surprise so then it's not a very good surprise but anyway I digress I am very excited to be opening this package today and I can't imagine not liking what's in it and I'm going to be opening my package today <laughs> with of all things my big crystal pen with a bold tip I love these pens these were my favorite pens before I discovered fountain pens and if you can notice it has a 1.6 millimeter tip which is enormous and I love them and I always try to keep some on hand because, you know, there are some times you just need a ballpoint pen, and um, those are my favorite. So why do I need this pen to open the package? Well, if you've ever noticed a big pen, it has this dagger-like protrusion on the cap, which is great for slicing things open and, you know, maybe poking your brother in the eye or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I just saw my pen sitting there, and I thought, hmm. I'm going to put him on camera today, because I love him. So, well, goodness, that was easy. Alrighty, and I do have to say, I have noticed a couple of other people who subscribe to the Ink Flight who have already posted videos, and if you'll notice, Ink Journal is in New Jersey, and I, of course, live in Virginia, which is pretty close to New Jersey, and some of the other people that have done the unboxings live the west coast so I don't know how that happened just the vagaries of the postal service I suppose or perhaps it's a conspiracy so we'll have to have an in-depth in discussion about the conspiracies of ink later on all right so let me see this month we fly to southern France oh I would love to fly to southern France to visit the picturesque boutique of L'Artisan Pastelier. Ooh, I've heard good things about these inks. The company uses natural raw materials and traditional recipes to create pigments and dyes for art supplies. Their Califolio collection of fountain pen inks have an international reputation for quality and can be mixed together to create a near infinite range of colors. Well, I love me some ink mixing. Okay. So, ooh, let's see what else is in the box. Ooh, January 2021, grow as a writer. Well, wouldn't I like to do that? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Isn't that true? That's a Chinese proverb. And if you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. And that is a quote from Stephen King. Also very true. As Nora Roberts says, you can't edit a blank page, so you must write. <gasps> I see a sticker. Oh, look. It's the very rare and special fountain pen orchid. I love it. Oh, that is so cute. Where do they come up with these ideas? I love it. All right. Storyboard ink friendly pocket notebooks. Oh, <gasps> yay. I have never had, um, shoot, what do they call those notebooks? Shoot, 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 I'll never think of it. The pocket size ones. Field journal. A field, field, field notes? Field journal. Field notes. Anyway, I've never had one of those. Um, because I really wasn't attracted to the small size, but I'm, I'm getting into small sizes more now. But I hear that the paper is not very fountain pen friendly. So, um... I've just, I've never tried them, but if these are fountain pen friendly, well then I am very interested. And my poor dog <laughs> is behind me wondering what I'm doing. I don't know if you can hear his tail banging against the tablecloth because I'm in my dining room, also known as my pen room, my pen and ink room. Okay, so let's see what this says about the pocket notebook, addition to the farm. They're made in India. They're three and a half by 5.9. They are thread bound. And they tell the story of one of the most significant influences on human development. Well, farming. Yes, isn't farming what created civilization thousands of years ago? 
Let's see, 64 pages of ink-friendly 90 GSM paper, dot grid format. Very nice, a limited production of 3,500 packs. <gasps> Ooh, I have a limited edition notebook. Fabulous. And Ink Journal donated 10 meals through Feeding America for each January ink flight box sold. Well, isn't that nice? And the book for this month is The Practice, Shipping Creative Work by Seth Godin. I know that name. Oh, he's a marketing guru. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to start reading the books he suggests because he has some really good ideas. Well, do we want to open this up first? Aha. I'm going to use my little dagger pen to open my package. I'm not kidding, folks. These caps are incredibly sharp. <laughs> so, if you don't have a letter opener or a pair of scissors handy, just grab your bic. It'll open up anything, including your fingertips, so please be careful. Oh, they're so cute. I guess that's sunrise and sunset, perhaps. Maybe I should put them where you can see them. Cute. Oh, and the little scarecrow has a book on his head. Oh, that's adorable. Hmm. Made by Endless.com. Well, I don't think that's like Endless Pens. And there's an Endless Recorder. I don't know. This notebook belongs to, and if found, please return to, and then you're... Starting and ending dates. Very cool. And then just some nice dot grid paper. And the dots are not too, they're not too dark. They're not too visible. Which is nice. Oh, I got a little schmutz there. That means my notebook is unique. Because I have some schmutz that nobody else has. Let's see. Alrighty. Well, those are super cute. Hmm. I'm working. I'm still working. I'm still thinking. I'm still planning <laughs> about my um, my little ink notebook thing. And it's a pocket size. The little the little um, cover that I have is a pocket size cover. So I might have to add those to my little notebook. So cool. Okay. Let's take a look at these inks here, because that's the main part of the show. Oh, I need my little opener here again. See how handy this thing is? I'm telling you. Look, and I'm, I'm showing you how sharp this dude is. So sharp. Ooh, and sticky, sticky bubble wrap. Gosh, it's like, it's bubble cling wrap. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, oh, I'm just fascinated by the strangest things. I tell you what. All right, I'm gonna slide these dudes off. See, again, this stuff is sticky. And these guys don't wanna, don't wanna slide off. Okay. All right, so we have Califolio Granat. Let me see. Granat, Granat. Well, where's Mr. Granat? Oh, here he is. All right. Well, maybe I should just swatch these as I'm talking about them instead of talking about all of them and then swatching them. Oh, decisions, decisions. Oh, here's Bobo. Bobo has been behaving himself this week. He didn't wander away, which is very nice. Thank you, Bobo. Okay, so Califolio Granat. When I first looked at that, I thought it said California Granat, <laughs> and I didn't know what that was. Okay. So Bobo will hold this for me securely. And, oh, let me get my water over here on my writing side. And I still have not found a cover for my beautiful new table, so... I'm, I'm taking my life in my hands. I am um, not covering the table. I've, I've spilled some water on it already. I hope that's water. <laughs> but it'll be fine. 
it makes me think about the um, desk that the Goulets have. Um, Brian Goulet said when they first got started that he was doing all of the ink samples on this desk in their garage, and the ink just went everywhere, so now the desk is just covered in ink splatters. And it's it's a mess, but it's unique and special. And it's, you know, it's a piece of their history, so that's really cool. Okay, so this is Califolio Granat. Inspired by Garnet Gemstones, the rich pinkish burgundy of this ink has a demure quality on the page. Oh, we like demure. Let's see. Alrighty, let me get a little ink here. And this is Califolio. Dear, it seems like I'm shaking the camera quite a bit. Granate. Hmm. It's, um, it seems very dark. Not in a bad way, just I'm saying it seems dark. Kind of I don't know, browner, maybe. I think of burgundy as a a very red color. I think this is a little bit more brownish looking. Ooh, it's very light. Wow. This, I think the swab is looking very different from the writing. Which is interesting. Okay. We will put him aside to dry. And let's see. Next up we have Califolio Andronople. Where is Andronople? Is that this one? I've heard a lot of people talk about this one. Formerly the name of what is now known as Edirn, Turkey. Andronople was famous for its red dye. Ooh, well, I would love to go to Turkey. Istanbul just sounds fascinating. And now I have another place to visit in Turkey. Edirne. All right. Califolio. Andronople. Hmm, that's looking similar to Granat. Let's see what the swatch looks like. It's definitely looking pinker. Ooh, yes, much pinker. I don't know, what would we call that? Magenta? Is that a magenta? Let him slide around a little bit. Very cool. Okay. And next we have Califolio Inti. And where is Inti? Hmm, this one. Named after the ancient Incan ink and sun god, this golden brown ink has nice shading. Ooh. I've just been thinking I needed to get some more brown inks. Actually, someone suggested that I do um, 30 inks, 30 days with Noodler's ink. And I don't have quite enough Noodler's inks to do all 30 days, so I was looking at some samples. And I was looking at their brown samples, which are beautiful and I've heard good things about. All right, Califolio Inti. For some reason I was thinking their sun god was called something else. Not Inti. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking about the Mayans. Anyway, that is looking lovely. It's very, it's very orangey. 
I don't know if I would call this a golden brown. I mean, it's, oh, and it seems kind of dry, too. Goodness, he doesn't want to get off the Q-tip. Come on now. Oh, maybe I didn't have enough ink on the swatch, on the swab. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, nope. <laughs> he is very dry, very, very dry. I don't think we're going to get a drip out of this one. Let's see. Maybe a dot. Maybe we'll get a dot. Wow, just nothing. Oof. Okay. Anyway, this, this is bringing to mind ancient copper. But um, my memories of inks are, are not that great. So ancient copper could look completely different. But just for some reason, this is making me think about ancient copper. All right. And next up, we have Califolio Sepia. Is that this one? Yes. This is really fun. This is like getting a, uh, a random ink sampler set from Goulet. You just don't know what you're going to get. But um, this is a bit more curated than the Goulet sampler because that's completely random. But with this one, it, it has a little um, continuity, I guess, because it's all around the same brand. But it's very cool. It's very fun. Califolio. Sepia. Oh, that's a very nice brown. Oh, I have to read the um, the uh, description. Sepia pigment is traditionally derived from the ink sac of the common cuttlefish. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, I love cuttlefish. They're my favorite animals. Oh. This sepia ink has a light milky brown color. Okay, this says... Sepia pigment is traditionally derived from cuttlefish. So I, I will tell myself this is non-traditional sepia, and it didn't come from a cuttlefish. Oh, Cuttlefish are awesome, by the way. Actually, for a while there, I was obsessed with this octopus channel. There's, um, I don't know, some octofish, uh, octofish, some octopus lab that studies them, and they have all these different octopuses in the tanks and they do different um, intelligence tests and things with them and it's absolutely fascinating. They're fascinating creatures. And cuttlefish too. Cuttlefish are like the the scrappy little brothers of the octopus. The octopus seem a little bit more laid back, but cuttlefish are just they're like they're just like in your face. They're the they're like the I don't know, the motorcycle gang of cephalopods. But again, I digress. Cephalopods rock, by the way. Okay, so next up we have Califolio Olivastri. Olivastri. Fun name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Califolio. Make sure I spell this right. Olivastri. This deep forest green ink has a rich saturation and decent shading. Yes, so far it is a lovely color. Ooh, and it is not wanting to come off of my glass nib. Swishing, swishing, swishing. Have to make sure it's nice and wiped off for our next ink. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Ooh, that is lovely. Ooh. 
Again, he's seeming a little drier. Let's see if I can get a drip out of him. Mm. Ain't no dripping around here. Okay, let me saturate a little bit more. Let's see what we can do. Nope. <laughs> I got a blob. A blob is about all I'm going to get. Alright. It's very interesting how the inks have different properties. I mean, what makes an ink drier or makes an ink wetter or flow better? I know it's the components in them, but I just find all that stuff fascinating. Someday I'm going to be an ink mixer. I just know it. Alright. Next up we have Califolio Oliphants. <gasps> Oliphants? <gasps> Bobo's an Oliphant? Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> okay. Oliphants gets its name from the river in South Africa. This blue-black ink has a slight lean towards teal. Well, that sounds beautiful. All right, Bobo. This ink should be right up your alley. Califolio. Olefants. Olefants. Heffalumps and woozles. Of course, Bobo would be a heffalump. Let's see. Uh-oh, I got a little blob on the card there. I think that's this color. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. A blue-black leaning towards teal. I agree 100%. That's beautiful. And we're getting a drip. Very interesting. Alright. And last but not least, we have Califolio Mediterranean. Oh, ooh, oh, no, I have to put the cat back on this one. <laughs> I was just going to sample that one again. It was so much fun the first time. Okay. Now, this one I have actually purchased a sample of before. I forget where I saw it. It might have been on the Fountain Pen Network. I don't remember anyway. Some, some people were talking about blue inks, and several people were just raving about Califolio blues. Uh, Mediterranean and Pacific. So I got some of those to try them. Califolio. In fact, one person said that, that uh, Pacific was the best blue ever. But um, I did not feel the same. I didn't think it was that great. But that's why there are so many inks out there, because there are inks that appeal to everyone. Ooh, that is beautiful. Hmm, maybe I haven't sampled this one before. Because the Califolio inks that I got were kind of, um, they were paler blues. But this is beautiful. And I got a teeny tiny little drip. Teeny tiny. Let's see if I can get a little bit more. Yep, I got some more. Alrighty, so we are going to let these dry and come back and see what they look like. And just for, for future planning purposes, I think the smart thing to do would be to open up the package, swatch all the inks, put them aside to let them dry, and then look at the extras in the package. Because now I just have to sit here and wait for the ink to dry. But I won't make you do that as well, so I will be right back. Okay, I think everything has had a chance to dry now, so let's take a closer look. 
Oh my goodness, look at my fingers. <laughs> I think I got a little ink on my glass pen, but that's okay. This is the Califolio Granat. And it's looking a little bit redder in person. And there's kind of a green halo around the uh, dark area there. Not kind of sheeny. I guess sheen is a different color, so since this is a different color, I guess it would have to be sheen. It's definitely looking green, but it doesn't have that shine that a sheen usually has. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, then we have Califolio Andronopal. This is a very vibrant color. I would call this magenta. It's not showing up quite as vibrant on the camera. I'm trying to turn it to see if the light makes any difference, but nope. It's definitely more vibrant in person. And this has a bit of that sheen around the edge as well, kind of a lighter green color. And, and these are somewhat similar. This is a kind of a, a pale burgundy, and this is a more vivid magenta. And they both have a little greenish sheen to them. All right, then we have the Califolio Inti. Very pretty orange. Again, I'm thinking it, it might look like ancient copper, but I don't have my ancient copper swatch nearby, so it's hard to say but uh, more, more vibrant in person than it is on camera. And this is the Califolio Sepia. And the instructions described it as a milky brown, and I would call it milky. It's very, almost transparent looking. Now, of course, I can't say if it's tra transparent until I, you know, apply it over something else. Just on this blank card, I can't really say if it's transparent, but it just seems very very light. It's a very light brown. And on the camera it's looking much grayer. It's more brown in person, but still that kind of milky color. And I don't see any sheen or anything going on in the dark area. All right, this is Califolio olivestri. Olivastri. And this one was a a dry one that I just couldn't seem to get a drip out of. But there's some really interesting looking purple sheen around that dark area. Can you guys see that? Of course, it's hard. It's always hard to show the sheen. But it's definitely purple. Very interesting. A green ink with a purple sheen. Now, I would like to see this in a pen to see if that purple sheen would show up when you're writing. Because this ink seems very dry, and it might be hard to get that sheen to show up. All right, this is Califolio Oliphants. Kind of a, a dusty, dusty blue, a cornflower blue. Very pretty. A hint of some red sheen around the edge of the dark area. But just a hint. But a very nice color, very subtle blue. And then finally, we have the Califolio Mediterranean. Ooh, I forgot my accent aigu. So I'll just put it in there with my handy big. See how handy, see how handy ballpoint pens are? You gotta have a ballpoint pen. And I just whacked the camera with the pen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I'm a little biased. I, I love my big crystal pens. Okay, again, this is having a hint of some red sheen around the dark area. But you can see how much that drip spread out, so I think this would be a much wetter ink. And I don't think I'll be able to show the sheen, but it's very pretty. I would say probably the most sheen except for maybe Andronopal. I, would, I wouldn't call either one of them a heavy sheener, but they both have some nice sheen. This has kind of a yellowish green sheen, and then this one has a red sheen. But very pretty, both of them. Both very vibrant. Again, on the camera, they're looking a little washed out. Alrighty, well that was our 
ink flight for January with our lovely booklets. That was really exciting, and I can't wait until next month. And doesn't this look like the plant from Little Shop of Horrors? My goodness. <laughs> you just never know what's going to come in these little packages, but that's why it's so exciting to find out. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you for some more swatching and ink pen fun soon. So take care. Bye-bye.